Hello friends, the chapter that we are going to discuss today is employment, growth, informalization and other issues. We will be studying part 2 of this chapter and once you go through this lesson, the learners will be able to understand the following. First, difference between formal workers and informal workers. Two, employment in organized and unorganized sectors. Unorganized or informal sector employment problems of concept of unemployment and unemployed types of unemployment, government and employment generation. So, let us start with the introduction of this chapter. In India, the proportion of casual laborers has been increasing. One of the objectives of development planning in India has been to provide decent livelihood to its people. It was envisaged that the industrialization strategy would bring surplus workers from agriculture to industry with better standard of living as in developed countries. You know that India has been an agrarian economy where most of people are employed in agriculture. With the passage of time, we expected that many workers will be shifting from less productive agricultural sector to more productive manufacturing and services sector. But even after 65 years of planned economic development, more than half of the workforce still depends on farming as the major source of livelihood. That is of course, a disappointing scenario. Economists argue that over the years, the quality of employment has been deteriorating. Even after working for more than 10, 20 years, why do some workers not get maternity benefit, provident fund, gratuity, pension? Why does a person working in private sector get a lower salary as compared to another person doing the same work in the public sector? We know that only a small section of Indian workforce is getting regular income. The government through its labor laws enable them to protect their rights in various ways. This section of workforce which is regular forms trade unions, bargains with employers for better wages and other social security measures. Who are they? We will be discussing informalization of workforce now. In order to understand the informalization of workforce, we classify workers into two categories. One, workers in the formal sector and two, workers in informal sectors. They are also referred to as workers in organized and unorganized sectors. So, we have formal or organized sector and informal or unorganized sector. All the public sector establishments and those private sector establishments which employ 10 or more hired laborers are called formal sector establishments and those who work in such establishments are called formal sector workers. All other enterprises and workers working in these enterprises form the informal sector. Thus, informal sector includes millions of farmers, agricultural workers, owners of small enterprises and people in those enterprises. It also includes self-employed who do not have any hired workers. It also includes all non-farm casual wage laborers who work for more than one employer such as construction workers and head load workers. Workers in the formal sector enjoy social security benefits. They earn more than those in the informal sector. Developmental planning envisaged that as the economy grows, more and more workers would become formal sector workers, so that social security is given to them and the proportion of workers engaged in the informal sector would come down with the passage of time. 
there are about 473 million workers in the country. There are about 30 million workers in the formal sector. So, out of 473 million, only 30 million workers are there in the formal sector. The percentage of people employed in the formal sector in the country is just 6 percent. Thus, the rest 94 percent are in the informal sector. Out of these 30 million formal sector workers, only 6 million, that is only about 21 percent are women. In the informal sector, male workers account for 69 percent of the workforce. Since the late 1970s, many developing countries including India started paying attention to enterprises and workers in the informal sector as employment in the formal sector is not growing. Workers and enterprises in the informal sector do not get regular income. They do not have any protection or regulation from the government. Workers are dismissed without any compensation, so there is no job security as such. Technology used in the informal sector enterprises is outdated. They also do not have any accounts. Workers of this sector live in slums and are squatters. So, their living conditions, their working conditions, their social security measures, all of them are very disappointing and frustrating for those. Of late, owing to the efforts of the International Labour Organization or ILO, the Indian government has initiated the modernization of informal sector enterprises and provision of social security measures to informal sector workers, so that they can also lead a decent life. Table 1 shows employment in the organized and unorganized sectors. As is shown in the table, with the passage of time, there has been a spurt, an increase in the employment provided by the unorganized sector. Whereas, jobs in the public sector and the organized sector are stable. So, organized sector is more or less stable, whereas unorganized sector or the informal sector has been growing consistently. It can be seen that the share of unorganized sector has increased, whereas the organized sector has not generated much employment in the recent period. Third point is unemployment. Unemployment refers to a situation where there are persons who are capable of working that is they are physically as well as mentally fit to work and they are willing to offer their services, they are willing to work, but still they fail to get employment at the going wage rate. NSSO also known as National Sample Survey Organization defines unemployment as a situation in which all those who owing to lack of work are not working, but either seek work through employment exchanges, intermediaries, friends or relatives or by making applications to prospective employers or express their willingness or availability for work under the prevailing conditions of work and remunerations. In other words, we can say that unemployed are those who are ready to work at the going wage rate, but are unable to find jobs. There are a variety of ways by which an unemployed person can be identified. Economists define unemployed person as one who is not able to get employment of even one hour in a half day. There are three sources of data on unemployment. One, reports of Census of India. Second, NSSO reports of employment and unemployment situations and third, Director General of Employment and Training data of registration with employment exchanges. Though they provide different estimates of unemployment, they do provide us with the attributes of the unemployment in general and the variety of unemployment prevailing in our country. So, now we come to types of unemployment in India. There exist different types of unemployment in our country as we describe here. One is structural unemployment, which is the most prominent type of unemployment prevailing in India right now. Structural unemployment is caused by a mismatch of skills between unemployed and available jobs. 
it may be caused by drastic changes in the structure of the economy such as deindustrialization or some other change in the structural composition of the economy which renders some unemployed workers unable to find work in new industries with different skill sets as a result of structural changes or technical progress some workers find their skills incompatible with new techniques of production or with the requirements of new industries in other words now the technique has progressed new skills are required but workers are unable to don new techniques so they fail to work in industries with new techniques it is the unemployment of such workers that is termed as structural unemployment globalization and the consequent international competition can also cause structural unemployment after structural unemployment we come to open unemployment people look for jobs in the newspapers some look for a job through friends or relatives in many cities you might find people standing in some selected areas looking for people to employ them for that day's work some go to factories and offices and give their bio data asking for job but stay home when there is no work some go to employment exchanges and register themselves for vacancies notified through employment exchanges the situation described above is called open unemployment and of course this is very frustrating for people disguised unemployment this is a type of unemployment which is not open and persons do not feel that they are unemployed though technically they are unemployed economists call unemployment prevailing in indian farms as disguised unemployment suppose a farmer has 4 acres of land and he actually needs only two workers and himself that is three in total to carry out various operations on his farm in a year but if he employs five persons and his family members such as his wife and children then there will be kind of overstaffing in the farm and this situation is known as disguised unemployment put conversely if some of the workers are removed from the job there will be no change in total output this means that these removed workers were not actually required or were not actually contributing to total output and therefore were technically unemployed despite being apparently employed one study conducted in the late 1950s showed about one third of agricultural workers in india as disguisedly unemployed the high incidence of disguised unemployment in india may be attributed to joint family system and lack of alternative means of employment due to poor labor absorption by the relatively faster growing secondary sector and tertiary sector farmers are forced to keep themselves engaged in the cultivation of family farms despite there being no scope for them to increase output on those farms and this situation becomes worse because of smaller and smaller size of land holdings which is caused by subdivision and fragmentation next type of unemployment is seasonal unemployment which is particularly relevant to india because seasonal unemployment is found in agriculture which is a main part of indian economy many people migrate to urban area pick up a job and stay there for some time but come back to their home villages as soon as the rainy season begins this is because work in agriculture is seasonal there are no employment opportunities in the villages for all months in the year there are seasons like sowing and harvesting of crops when all are busy and employment is high but there are also slack seasons such as the period between sowing of crops and harvesting when most people have nothing much to do and therefore they are unemployed at that time it has been estimated that a farmer who cultivates one crop in a year usually goes without a job 
for almost 5 to 7 months in a year. When farmers have no work to do on farms, they go to urban areas and look for jobs. It is because of slackness in agricultural season, they are getting unemployed, they are forced to go to urban areas to look for jobs and therefore, this kind of unemployment is known as seasonal unemployment. This is also a common form of unemployment prevailing in India. Now, we come to industrial unemployment. Industrial unemployment is a situation when people are willing and able to work in industries or manufacturing sector, but are unable to find jobs. The main reason of industrial unemployment is that the pressure of population has been consistently increasing, but rates of generation of jobs are dismally low. Increasing trend of migration of population from rural to urban areas has also aggravated the problem. It may also be said that industrial unemployment is a spillover of rural unemployment and poor labor absorption by the manufacturing sector. Major cause of this poor absorption of labor by the manufacturing sector is the massive use of labor saving devices that is mechanization using automation and so on. Next we come to educated unemployment. This type of unemployment takes place when people fail to get jobs despite being educated. This situation is very frustrating when after investing a considerable time and money and effort in education, people fail to procure jobs. On the other hand, this also amounts to nation's resources going waste. When educated youth fails to get jobs, they may sometimes take to antisocial and illegal activities. There are two major reasons of educated unemployment in India. One, education has failed to enhance employability of youth. These days, you know that this is a major issue, burning issue. Many industrialists have opined that education system in India needs to be revamped, needs to be overhauled, so as to make it more uh, productive, so as to enable it to enhance employability of educated youth. The other reason of educated unemployment is that the rate of job creation has not been able to keep pace with the increasing educated labor force. Next topic for us is government and employment generation in India. It is obvious that government has the responsibility of improving the plight of people in general. So, government needs to focus its schemes, its programs, its policies towards enhancing employment generation. Since independence, the union and state governments have played an important role in generating employment or creating opportunities for employment generation. Their efforts can be broadly categorized into two categories, direct and indirect. In the first category, that is direct, government employs people in various departments for administrative purposes. It also runs industries, hotels and transport companies and hence provides employment directly to workers. When output of goods and services from government enterprises increases, then private enterprises which receive raw material from government enterprises also raise their output and hence increase the number of employment opportunities in the economy. For example, when a government owned steel company increases its output, it will result in direct increase in the employment in the government company. At the same time, private companies which purchase steel from it as a raw material will also increase their output and therefore, they will be able to hire more people. So, employment will be enhanced and this is the indirect generation of employment opportunities by the government initiatives in the economy. Expanding self-employment programs and wage employment programs are being considered as the major ways of addressing poverty and unemployment. Examples of self-employment programs include Rural Employment Generation Program, which has acronym REGP, Prime Minister's Rozgar Yojana, PMRY, or 
स्वर्ण जयंती शहरी रोजगार योजना ऑल्सो नोन एज एस जे एस आर वाई द फर्स्ट प्रोग्राम एम्स एट क्रिएटिंग सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज इन रूरल एरियाज द खादी एंड विलेज इंडस्ट्रीज कमीशन के वी आई सी इज इम्प्लीमेंटिंग दिस प्रोग्राम अंडर दिस प्रोग्राम वन कैन गेट फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ बैंक लोन्स टू सेट अप स्मॉल इंडस्ट्रीज द एजुकेटेड अनएम्प्लॉयड फ्रॉम लो इनकम फैमिलीज इन रूरल एंड अर्बन एरियाज कैन गेट फाइनेंशियल हेल्प टू सेट अप एनी काइंड ऑफ एंटरप्राइज विच जनरेट्स एम्प्लॉयमेंट अंडर पी एम आर वाई एस जे एस आर वाई मेनली एम सेट क्रिएटिंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज बोथ सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयमेंट एंड वेज एम्प्लॉयमेंट इन अर्बन एरियाज अर्लियर अंडर सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयमेंट प्रोग्राम्स फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस वॉज गिवन टू फैमिलीज और इंडिविजुअल्स बट सिंस द नाइनटीन नाइन्टीज दिस अप्रोच हैज बीन चेंज नाउ दोज हु विश टू बेनिफिट फ्रॉम दिस प्रोग्राम्स आर एनकरेज टू फॉर्म सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स इनिशियली दे आर एनकरेज टू सेव सम मनी एंड लैंड अमंग दैम सेल्स एज स्मॉल लोन्स लेटर थ्रू बैंक्स द गवर्नमेंट प्रोवाइड्स पार्शल फाइनेंशियल असिस्टेंस टू सेल्फ हेल्प ग्रुप्स विच दैन डिसाइड हुम द लोन इज टू बी गिवन टू फॉर सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयमेंट एक्टिविटीज स्वर्ण जयंती ग्राम स्वरोजगार योजना इज वन सच प्रोग्राम दिस हैज नाउ बीन रिस्ट्रक्चर्ड एज नेशनल रूरल लाइवलीहुड मिशन एन आर एल एम अ सिमिलर प्रोग्राम कॉल्ड नेशनल अर्बन लाइवलीहुड मिशन हैज ऑल्सो बीन इन प्लेस फॉर अर्बन पुअर द गवर्नमेंट हैज अ वराइटी ऑफ प्रोग्राम्स टू जनरेट वेज एम्प्लॉयमेंट फॉर द पुअर अनस्किल्ड पीपल लिविंग इन रूरल एरियाज In 2005 the parliament passed a new act to provide guaranteed wage employment to every rural household whose adult volunteer is to do unskilled manual work for a minimum of 100 days in a year this was a major step by the government this act is known as mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act also known as manrega This act is a major employment initiative by the government that aims to guarantee the right to work. Under this act, all those among the poor who are ready to work at the minimum wage can report for work in areas where this program is implemented. It may be mentioned here that earlier this program was restricted to a few areas on a pilot basis, but now this program has been implemented. throughout the country this is the first scheme of its kind to provide wage employment on demand and thereby it ensures a security net to rural people this not only has resulted in generation of employment but has also led to development of rural infrastructure like wood harvesting drought relief flood control measures and so on so it has built a significant rural infrastructure also manrega is to be implemented mainly by gram panchayats it has improved their uh, living standards and has proved to be quite effective in protecting the environment empowering rural people particularly women reducing rural urban migration and fostering social equity apart from of course its core objective of generating employment opportunities manrega has also checked labor migration from rural areas to urban areas another important aspect is a new strategy implemented by the government in terms of programs like make in india startup india skill india and so on these new initiatives are tackling the employment problems from a new perspective some believe that we are living in an age where rather than looking for jobs we need to create jobs for the youth today the real pleasure the real kick should come not from getting salary but it should come from hiring people it should come from converting their innovative ideas and vision into reality these programs that is skill india innovate india startup india these programs tap the potential of youth in a very effective and competitive way with the help of such programs 
within a short time the economy has seen many inspiring success stories such as paytm ola oyo rooms yatra.com and many more all these programs aim at providing not only employment but also services in areas such as primary health primary education rural drinking water nutrition laying of rural roads development of watersheds or degraded lands and many such other programs so after having discussed all these things let us summarize what we have studied so far here after economic reforms of 1991 india has been witness to employment opportunities in the service sector that is why sometimes it's known as service led growth these new jobs are found mostly in the informal sector and the nature of jobs is mostly casual government is the major formal sector employer in the country acquiring skills and undergoing training are important for getting employment disguised unemployment is a common form of unemployment in rural india there has been a change in the structure of labor force in india through various schemes and policies the government is taking initiatives to generate employment